Alzheimer's disease is a very complex disorder of the most human uh, aspect of uh, biology, of the thinking part of the brain. And patients lose their memory and other aspects of cognitive function gradually uh, over a course of 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, we've been asking why that is, what causes people to lose memory. And it seems to be due to the buildup of a protein in the brain, referred to as the amyloid protein or amyloid beta protein. And many years before a person becomes forgetful, before she forgets where she parked her car or the names of some of her grandchildren, um, she will build up uh, plaques in the brain composed of this amyloid protein. They're round plaques that can only be seen microscopically. And shortly or some time after that buildup, tangles will build up in the brain, made up of a different protein that has the Greek letter tau. And the plaques and tangles together mount up over time, over decades, we think, and lead to short-circuiting of nerve cells. In this essence, uh, Alzheimer's is a failure of the systems in the brain that allow one nerve cell to communicate information to the next. In 1992, uh, my colleagues and I here at Brigham Women's Hospital discovered something very surprising, and that is that this amyloid beta protein that uh, we think nowadays causes Alzheimer's is made by everyone throughout life. Uh, and this was a surprise when all only had seen this protein by uh, isolating the amyloid plaques from people who had died of Alzheimer's disease. Why doesn't everyone get Alzheimer's disease then? We figured out uh, in the subsequent years after our 90, 1992 discovery that there are certain genetic risk factors and environmental factors that make people handle the amyloid protein poorly. And those are the folks who then get buildup and eventually get Alzheimer's disease. Over the years, we've been uh, pushing ahead to understand enough about the starting point of Alzheimer's to try to imagine treatments. And uh, I myself have written a lot and uh, both scientific data and opinion articles about why companies should focus on the amyloid protein. And now a number of them have. Recently, there was really uh, what I would consider a true breakthrough in a therapeutic trial. Uh, Biogen has an antibody that they created in their laboratories that binds to and neutralizes the amyloid protein. They showed that the number of amyloid plaques in the patient's brain went down dramatically, particularly in the highest dose of their antibody, after just a year. Indeed, even after six months, there was a lowering. And this is something we never really expected in Alzheimer's. And then they coupled that lowering of amyloid plaques, which they could image with a PET scan, to a stabilization of memory. So people did not continue to decline. And they uh, were about where they were at the beginning of the 12-month trial. And I should say that uh, the antibody that Biogen is using in their trials is not the only one. Uh, the theory we've put forward has led many companies to try to find anti-amyloid agents. And there are other antibodies from other companies. It's a wonderful worldwide race, which is just what our patients would want. We have evidence from the trial uh, that Biogen did, or a trial that Eli Lilly did, or that Merck is doing now, that they are moving the needle, that they are slowing down the amyloid buildup, they're even clearing the amyloid to some extent from the patient's brain, and that's associated with uh, cognitive stability. The A4 trial was really developed by my close colleague and friend, Dr. Risa Sperling, here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And, uh, but now it is involving many, many physicians and scientists around the world. A4 stands for anti-amyloid in asymptomatic Alzheimer's. So we usually don't think of Alzheimer's as being asymptomatic. We think of it as being very symptomatic. You can't remember things. You can't, you get confused about your grandchildren. But here, we're asking people to enroll in the trial who are okay now. They might have a family history of Alzheimer's, uh, or they certainly will have an abnormal PET scan or a spinal fluid exam. And if we enroll them, they'll get a drug that will, we think, make it less likely they'll go into the symptomatic phase of Alzheimer's. They'll stay asymptomatic, i.e. before symptoms.
We can't say that physical and mental exercise completely take away the amyloid protein or they dramatically lower its production in the brain. We can't say that. But it looks like physical and mental exercise uh, beef up your brain in some ways, just like they would help your muscles and give you better reserve in your brain. So if, God forbid, the Alzheimer process starts, you have more what we call cognitive reserve. And that's why we think that people with more complicated uh, professions with higher levels of educational entertainment have uh, less Alzheimer's than others. The question I'm always asked is, uh, when is this treatment arriving? We, we can't get it soon enough. We have loved ones, we have relatives that have this. And the answer is a few years away. Um, so not a decade, probably not half a decade, because the clinical trials are going very well. But in the meantime, people who are concerned about Alzheimer's have it in their family, they can volunteer patients to come to our trials. And we will assess them, diagnose them, and see if they're eligible. And so since there are no drugs uh, that we can just write a prescription for today, the way to get at possible disease-modifying treatments for Alzheimer's is to come into a trial. And we think that's terribly important. And here at Brigham and Women's Hospital and many other medical centers around the country, we're encouraging families and patients to come forward and volunteer for trials.